Welcome to JTB number four, uh, our final JTB. And uh, algebra on this one's a little less hairy than on JTB three. So let's go ahead and get to it. Let's talk about the graph. And I know that <laughs> trying to fight the temptation to just run immediately to your graphing calculator. <coughs> Let's take a look at this with some of the things we've learned in, during, the, during this course. If this is a fraction, a rational function, then the only way it can be 0 is if the numerator is 0. And the zero, numerator is only 0 when x equals 0. And 0 does not make the denominator 0. So this is a 0. Not only that, it's a single 0. So the graph either passes through it or passes through it like this. You know, think about like that's our mole man zero. The street, the mole man can only visit the street people through this manhole cover right here. Now, as x gets really, really big in model behavior, we get a big negative, but over a much bigger positive. Negative over positive is negative. Little over big is trying to be zero. This graph wants to get sucked into the x-axis from below. And if we think about that. That means the graph is going up but cupping down. Therefore, the first derivative way to the right is going to be going up positive, while the second derivative cupping down is going to be negative. If all works out, we'll see. Big negative. Big negative gives me a big positive, but over a much bigger positive. So relatively speaking, we've got a little positive or a smaller positive over a much bigger negative. It's trying to be, nope, smaller positive over a much bigger positive. It's trying to be 0, but positive divided by positive, positive. And here's a common, common mistake, excuse me, is to say, oh, well, it's going down. Slope is negative. But really, from left to right, it's going up, cupping up. I expect positive. It's going up positive, it's cupping up. So what's the rest of this graph look look like? Well, I know then it must pass through here, so I suspect it looks something like this. So it looks like we cup up, cup down, hit a max, cupping down. Looks like we start cupping up here, hit a min, cupping up, and then turn to cupping down. So that's a lot about what's going to go on here if we've got the graph right. So it's nice to see if we can support that. So let's go ahead and get started here. Y prime equals quotient rule low. D high minus high. D low over the square of the thing below. So that is, let's simplify that numerator a little bit. I get negative 2x squared minus 8 minus negative plus 2x times 2x, 4x squared on star. So I get that first derivative is 4x squared minus 2x squared, 2x squared minus 8. Oh, I don't want star anymore. x squared plus 4. So I'm going to put that down. I realize I can factor the numerator, and, and you're certainly welcome to, over x squared plus 4. Oh, by the way, over the square of the thing below. Over the square of the thing below. I'll bet you were shouting at your computers when you saw that. Over the square of the thing below. Don't want to make those mistakes. It's definitely precision here. So what do I want to do with that? I want to set that equal to 0, but this is my first derivative. If I do that, then I can say, well, it's 0 when the numerator is 0. So therefore, 2x squared minus 8 must equal 0. Or x squared must equal add 8 divide 2, 4. So x equals plus or minus 2. So it, which tells us, in terms of the graph, those are the spots that the graph levels off. The graph levels off at 2, must be about right here. 
and that negative 2 looks like we got our max and our min. So let's put those down here and just confirm that. Negative 2 to 2. The first derivative is 0 at those two spots. Let's put something in between there. Let's say 0. Put 0 in and I get negative over positive. Negative. The graph is going down from negative 2 over to 2. Oh, that's nice. Something bigger. Let's put in 3. And I get 2 times 9, 18 minus 8, positive. Put 3 in the denominator, I clearly get positive. Positive divided by positive. And it does not take long to see that if I put negative 3 in, it's the same. Kind of an interesting case going on here. It appears as though our our function is odd and the first derivative of it is even. Okay, okay y double prime, second derivative, low, x squared plus 4 squared, d high times 4x minus high, 2x squared minus 8, d low, sorry, d low, careful, chain rule this, outside derivative, or treat the mama to something to the first, leave the baby alone, treat the baby 2x, all on star. Let's work to simplify that a little bit. I'm actually not going to distribute and FOIL all this. You'll see why here in a second. But I can write that as 4x times x squared plus 4 squared minus, let's see, I've got a plain old 2 times a plain old 2x, 4x. That's nice. I've just matched a factor. I'm going to put the x squared plus 4 next. You'll see why if you don't already and left with a 2x squared minus 8, which actually factors more. Um, I'm not going to, and you'll see why on that as well, if you don't already. Now, out of the top, I have two terms, this term and this big messy term, but they share a 4x factor. I'm going to factor 4x out. They also share a single factor of x squared plus 4. I'm factoring it out. If I take a 4x and an x squared plus 4 out of here, I'm left with a single x squared plus 4. I didn't take out a minus. If I take the 4x out, this is gone. The x squared plus 4 out, that's gone. And all I'm left with is 2x squared minus 8. Likely mistake not to put that parenthesis there and forget to distribute that negative to that 8. And all of that is divided by star. Okay, getting there. So I've got 4x x squared plus 4 times, let's see, I've got negative 2x squared plus an x squared. That is negative x squared. And I've got... 4, ultimately plus 8, plus 12, all on x squared plus 4. We want, at this stage, low d high minus high d low over the square of the thing below. This should be x squared plus 4 to the fourth. And what do we notice? We can cancel an x squared plus 4 here, and we get 4x times, um, I'll go, I'm going to factor a negative out of this. So I'll make it negative, this would be x squared minus 12. You don't have to do that. And all of that, this cancels one of these on x squared plus 4 to the third. So negative 4x x squared minus 12 all on x squared plus 4 
to the third. Okay. So I have zeros at if I set this equal to zero, my zeros are x equals zero. That would create the numerator zero. And add 12, take the square root, plus or minus square root of 12, that's zero, and plus or minus square root of four, two, leaves us with a three. So second derivative is zero here. Somewhere over here is two square root of three. And somewhere over here to the left is negative two square root of three. Kind of divides these things into regions that we're going to discuss up on the graph. So algebra a little bit easier than number three, I believe, but we got a lot more sections going on down here, a lot more things to talk about on the graph. So maximums, the maximum occurs when the graph go, ooh, holy smokes, I'll bet you were yelling at me here too. This is positive. I, I remember saying it, that it would be the same to the left, but just to confirm, something to the left of negative two into the first derivative like negative three gives us two times positive nine minus eight positive on positive. Okay, Whew. glad I caught that one. Thanks for yelling at me. Um, so we get a maximum when the graph goes up and then comes down. The graph goes up and then comes down. We get a maximum at negative two, confirmed on our chart. We get a minimum when the graph goes down and then goes up. We got a minimum at two. Let's check our second derivative values now. Let's go ahead and just put two in this second derivative. If I put two in here, I get negative eight times four minus times negative eight. I get negative times negative positive over positive. We're positive in here. If I put something bigger than 2 square root of 3, like 5 is safely bigger than that. If I put 5 in here, I get negative 20. 25 minus 12 is positive. I get negative times positive negative over positive or negative here. If I put negative 1 in here, negative 1 gives me a positive out here but 1 minus 12 negative, positive times negative negative on positive. We're negative in here. And that is negative all the way through to that 0. And then if I go to the left of here, negative 5, I get positive 20, positive 20 minus 12, positive times positive, positive. Let's take a look at that with the graph. From the left, my graph should be going up, cupping up, going up, cupping up, until we get to two, negative two square root of three. And then it continues to go up, but begins to cup down. Going up, cupping down, until we get to negative two. After that, we're going down, cupping down, going down, cupping down until we get to zero, at which point we're going, still going down, but we start cupping up, going down, cupping up until we get to two. How about that? After two, we're going up, cupping up until we get to two square root of three. And after that, we're going up, cupping down, going up, cupping down. Wow, I feel really good about that graph. Okay, inflection points, where does the concavity change? At plus or minus two square root of three. Also at zero. Where's the graph in increasing? The graph's increasing when the slope is positive. The slope is positive from negative infinity until I get to negative 2 in union with, looks like 2 until infinity. 
where is it decreasing? Where is the slope negative? Right in here from negative 2 to 2. Concave up. We're almost there. Concave up right here. Negative infinity until I get to negative 2 square root of 3 in union with right here 0 to 2 square root of 3 and concave down here second derivative negative negative 2 square root of 3 to 0 in union with 2 square root of 3 to infinity. Easier algebra, but definitely more going on with different changes in here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six different kind of six different little regions where we, we make little changes, whether it be a positive, whether it be a maximum or a minimum or a concave change. So so kind of a kind of an interesting problem, a really nice one to wrap up on here. And uh, let me know if I can help with, with this. Again, reminder on this, I'm expecting all of these to be correct. And I'm expecting work to support your derivatives. So, without that, then it's going to then, then it's going to be a redo. Okay. Um, good luck and stay in touch.